All right, Easter's over with, but you probably got like two, three, four, five dozen eggs left in your refrigerator because you were worried about the pandemic and not being able to get any and you're wondering, what am I gonna do now? Well, let's make some egg noodles. And it's pretty much fun. Well, I think it's pretty much fun to make egg noodles because you get to make a mess on your counter. We're going to do that by putting Making a mountain out of two. Oh, measure carefully. And a half. Cups of flour. Kind of make a well in there. We're gonna actually make, we're gonna mix up dough for two kinds right at the moment. We're going to do a buckwheat flour combination with the plain flour and just the plain ones here. So, I want to crack a couple of good farm eggs in the center there. Ooh, and there she goes. Where's my fork when I need it? Kind of beat them up in there. It'll sort of mix with the flour, which eventually it's all going to be mixed together. Oh dear, we had a dam break, a dam break! Where's my scraper when I need it? Okay, you can use a bowl if you want, but this is way more fun. I'm gonna get that egg mixed up in there. Get it beaten. See how it's coming together? You're gonna have to use your hands for this too. Because you, you put a little pinch of salt in there because you usually um, salt your water when you're making pasta, so. Um, we're going to clean the fork off because I found my bench scraper here. It's a very good tool to have to keep your egg noodles contained. Now there's some recipes out there that have baking soda and there's some recipes that don't use milk. This one is one that comes together quite nicely for me. So for a beginner, this is what you want to do. I'm just going to keep at moistening that flour. See how nice that's coming together? I suppose you could do it in a bowl if you wanted to. <laughs> well, of course, the size of your eggs might have a little something to do with how moist your dough is. Mm, nice. Okay, I'm going to clean my scraper off as good as I can here. This is a dough that doesn't have anything in it that'll make it rise. No baking powder, no yeast. So it's not like a Nifla dough, even though we love Nifla. We're going to have mushroom fettuccine with fresh garlic from the garden tonight. And I think I might share that recipe with you too because you can't believe how easy that is. No more going out to the restaurant, so learn how to cook some great things at home. Oh, see, look at how nice that is. Nice. Now you want to knead this till it all comes together and there's no more flour sticking to your hands. Okay, there'll be a little bit of dough sticking to your hands. Get all that flour worked in there. Get it kneaded so you can knead it just like you would bread dough. And then we're going to let it rest, and then that's when the magic happens. Because as you know, everything with flour in needs time to process. Okay, let's give it some kneading time here so it comes together. It's no longer sticky. Okay, it's a little sticky. It'll roll easier then. But don't try rolling this out. Kind of like that strudel dough. Don't try rolling this out without letting it rest. There we go. I'm going to be able to do this without it sticking so much to my hands. Mm. 
and you can do this in your mixer. You can mix this in your mixer. Make egg noodles in fine time. Okay, we are going to put this in a bag to rest. And we're going to mix up some buckwheat ones. So, I have, I'm going to use two cups of regular flour. I'm going to make my well a little bit deeper. And I have a cup of buckwheat flour. Buckwheat is a vegetable, not a grain. It is gluten free. And it makes such a wonderful crispy noodle. But I wouldn't use these in soup because as you can see, the buckwheat is kind of gray in color and it will taint your soup. But oh my goodness, fried buckwheat noodles. Okay, so let's, that worked pretty good to make well in the center there. I'm gonna sprinkle a tiny little bit of salt. I forgot to measure out a half a cup of milk. We'll do that right now. Don't ask where I got the milk. Straight from the cow. Okay, so you can make lots of egg noodles today if you want. Because after you see what we do with the dough, you'll be able to save them on the counter. You can actually freeze some. There, look at how beautiful those are. And save your eggshells if you're growing tomatoes. They love the calcium. You'll notice those were brown eggs too. Okay, once again, we're gonna beat some flour in with our eggs so it doesn't go all over the place like it did the last time. This is so much fun. And we're going to switch over to our bench scraper and gather everything up. And try to get that milk mixed in there. Once again, you can do this in a bowl. You can do it in your mixer. We like to make homemade noodles and then you can eat them with your favorite gravy. You can fry them in butter, but a really good bad way to eat them, I mean that in the best way, is to put, uh, fry some potatoes. And they can be like your leftover cooked potatoes, leftover baked potatoes, fry them in some butter. Then you wanna add your noodles, cooked noodles. And cook them just like other pasta in a pot of boiling water. We'll get to that later on if, if I can get to the, ooh, nice, fettuccine part yet today. We're going to clean that off of there as best we can. We're going to start to get that dough sticking together. I'll tell you, that bench scraper makes light of pulling that off of there. You want to get all that incorporated in there. Don't be wasting any of it. And we're going to sprinkle a little tiny bit of flour down there. Coat the outside of the dough because apparently that worked better the last time. To knead our beautiful buckwheat dough. Now you know you can make pasta with Add some cooked spinach, which of course will change the amount of milk you put in here. Uh, 
I suppose kale, carrots, squash, all kinds of noodles. Oh, that dough is beautiful, beautiful. I'm just going to make sure we get some good, good work in there. Alrighty then. We're going to put that in another um, bag to rest. We're going to clean up and get ready to rock and roll our noodles. Oh my gosh, here we are. 30 minutes have passed. My dough has been rested. Of course, I lost my bench scraper again. Good thing I got a second one here. Oh, you say, where would I get a bench scraper like this? Menards. If you have a husband who's a handyman, you know exactly where these are in the grocery or in the Menard store. So we're gonna split this up into three doughs here. There we go. It's a little sticky, it's a little soft, but it's been resting enough so it's beautifully stretchy. Now, I have a pasta roller. I'm My dough's been rested for 30 minutes. It's nice and pliable. It's a little sticky, so you can't roll it out without adding a little flour. But it has to be, a, you have to be able to roll it out quite thin. I also have brought out my Mercado pasta roller. You do not need a pasta roller, but a pizza roller would, pizza cutter roller would work just as well to cut. This is just way more fun. Rolling pin, a little bit of extra flour, okay. I divided my dough into three pieces. I'm going to lightly flour my butcher block. And uh, I don't think the shape of this dough matters. I am just not that fussy about it. But, but you want it rolled out thin, 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 thin to cut your noodles. Now, with the pasta roller, you have to have just enough flour so it doesn't stick to the roller, but not too much flour. I'm going to actually, oh, I'll tell you what, I'm going to grab my pizza cutter. Okay, I'm going to drop my pizza cutter. Oh, here, I grabbed my pizza cutter. It was a giveaway from the North Dakota National Guard. Pfft, go figure. I'm going to cut a strip of dough here. It's got a little flour on it, and I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to use a wide setting on my pasta roller here to make the first roll here. Got to catch it. Okay. I had it rolled out that thin. Then you go over to number two and try it again. Now you don't have to make it just terribly thin. And number three, let's go to four right away. Let's see what happens there. And in she goes. Now I can tell there's some tension on there. Ooh, perfect. Perfect, 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 perfect. Okay, so over here I have a laundry dryer thingy that I use for my clothes and some clean dish towels because you want to let your pasta dry. You can hang it over a chair, you can hang it on a wash line, somewhere where it's out of the wind, where it can dry because once it's dried, it becomes very... Um, storable for lack of another word. Oh, I forgot to move my thing. So now next time I might go for a little wider piece of dough and not so long because it gets really hard to handle. But let's get her started here and see what kind of noodles come out the other end. Some fettuccine for my mushroom fettuccine. They're kind of hooked together a little bit, so I'm going to maybe not roll my my next batch out quite so thin. Now, if you're if you got somebody to help you with this, it might be not a bad idea. Someone to catch and someone to guide it in. Okay, there we go. We have our first batch of noodles. I'm going to hang them here to dry, kind of separate them a little bit. If your dough if your dough is too weak. They're gonna drop onto the floor as they stretch over your dish towels here. 
Oh, we lost a few short ones here. Don't want to lose any. They're good short or long. If you think about what a standard um, pasta is in the store. Okay, so what I'm going to do with this batch is I'm going to I'm going to roll this out by hand a little more. I had it pretty good and thin. And there are a lot of people who don't have room in their kitchen for that extra utensil. I might try to, to do this a little straighter next time, but then you just take your pizza cutter like this. These are wide egg noodles. Ta-da! Look at this. We're gonna pick them up off the counter with our handy dandy spatula and we're gonna drape them across the dish towel so that they can dry. We lost one to the cat. Oh well. Gotta make sure they're centered on there so they don't slide off. Ooh, these are gonna be good, 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 good. I am gonna do some more fettuccine sized ones but I'm gonna try for a little thicker dough this time. And let's do this. Let's. Oh, that's good. None of this can. None of this has to go to waste, man. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It only matters that it tastes good. We're gonna flour up this piece of dough, shape it a little bit like that, and then we're going to try and use the pasta machine. Oh, gotta change the setting back to the widest setting. Let's go to zero. That's pretty wide. Move your handle over and see if we stick. Okay, I can see that I could be getting into trouble here. We're going to need a little more flour and we're going to roll it through that setting again. Needs to get some traction, but it can't be too sticky. Okay, here we go. Awesome. Now we're going to move to one. Going to turn it around. Like I said, if you got kids, they would love to help you turn while you use both your hands here. We're not going to go any, any skinnier than three. And I can tell. Ooh, oh, God, we got a nice dough going here. Nice dough. It's not sticking to itself. It's not sticking to anything else. Oh, this is fun. All right, now we're going to go back to the fettuccine. I like the fettuccine size noodles. And we're going to just get that going. Yep, see, I used setting four on there. I got a little better separated noodle this time. Ta-da! Oh, look at that. Okay. Oh, oh, come on, come on, come on. Or they let, let, let go. All right. Oh, okay. We're going to separate them a little bit so that they dry faster. I, they might take all afternoon to dry and you, you want to duck. Well, my friends, when the buckwheat dough has rested, I cheated and made this dough earlier. When the buckwheat dough has rested, we are going to see what the buckwheat noodles look like. Until then, I'll see ya. Okay, so let's, oh, another 30 minutes have gone by and we're going to roll out some buckwheat noodles here. We can get them out of the thing. Oh, oh no, my dough is a little sticky. Come on. There we go. Changes, changes, changes. All right. Let's divide that into a couple pieces, make it easier to roll. Three again. This is not as sharp, of course, as my regular 
a little bit of flour on everybody. Okay, I'm going to try to square this off a little bit. I'm going to use the pizza roller on these, make some wider noodles here. Oh, let's do this. We'll roll it out in this thing. I want it a little bit thinner. We're going to a two here. You could call this cheating. Ooh, come on, come on, come on, don't stick there. There we go. Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? There we go. We're going to make some wide buckwheat noodles. And they're going to be fried, and they're going to be crispy, and they're going to be wonderful. Once again, this thing is great for picking them up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And we'll get them spread out there on the dish towel the way they're supposed to be. Ooh, nice, nice noodles. Running out of room here. So some of these that are a little drier now, I'm gonna move, I'm gonna be able to move them easier over. There we go. I'm just gonna let them have a fine afternoon on the rack. Ooh, my tummy's growling already. For that fine fettuccine. Okay, got some room. Gonna roll my some more. Oh, sorry, my dishwasher's making a little noise there. The dishwasher is hindering my pasta rolling here. Don't stick. There, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so I'm gonna cut these a little different here. Wide and skinny. Boy, this pizza roller thing is wonderful. And then I'm just going to kind of toss these on a dish towel. In case you don't have a rack, you can dry them any way you want. But always put them on a clean dish towel. We're just going to, whoops, we're going to use our wonderful paint thing. Look at that. Perfect. And one last bit of dough. We're gonna give it a roll. I don't want it sticking to my machine because you don't really ever wash these pasta machines. And here we go. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. We're going to make some more little noodles here. I'm going to try to cut them a little thinner this time. Doesn't really matter. These will be so nice and crispy. All right. Get those Easter eggs out. Make yourself some noodles, because it's all good. Well, here we are, and our noodles have been drying all day. So I'm going to whoop together some mushroom fettuccine, quote unquote, with homemade egg noodles instead, because I think it'll just be so much better. And the reason I'm doing that is because I managed to cop some cream You'll need one and a half cups of cream and or half and half from the farmer that I get my milk from. Then I chopped up some onions from last year's garden and some garlic, fresh garlic from this year's garden. Yes, it's out there growing already. And then these beautiful blue oyster mushrooms I got from Johnny and Allie Sullivan. And so I'm going to ch chop up the mushrooms I've got some water with a little butter in it boiling over here for the egg noodles. 
which are fairly dry, but they don't have to be completely dry. We're going to use these long skinny ones here. They'll separate a little bit when we're cooking them. So let's do a rundown here. We're gonna got our noodles all made. We got a pound of beautiful mushrooms. We're just gonna slice those babies up. And then we are going to take a quarter cup of butter and split it into two parts. We're gonna take two tablespoons, heat it up in a pan. We're gonna saute um, onions, however many onions you wish. Let me cut my mushrooms off here a little bit. You know, it can be a lot of onions, it can be a lot of garlic, but it should be some, like a small onion probably, and you know, a couple cloves of garlic because the garlic will lose its potency as it's sauteed. I'm gonna get as much of that mushroom off of the stem as possible. I mean, it doesn't get any better than this, does it? You can cut them up as big or as small as you wish. You can use any kind of mushroom you might find in the store. Uh, portobellas, I love portobellas. Criminis, just plain old oyster mushrooms that are pretty standard in all supermarkets. We like mushrooms, it's the best part. Until I got the cream, I was going to make mushroom soup with these, but this is so much better. Okay, so we're going to sweat the onions and the garlic. We're going to toss the um, mushrooms in there so that they get soft and wonderful, a little toasty maybe, but not, not fried. You don't really want to fry them. And then we'll add the cup and a half of cream. We'll add the rest of the quarter cup of butter. We'll add about a quarter to a half a cup of Parmesan. Salt, pepper, and grate some fresh nutmeg, which I just love this. I got this for my son a long time ago for um, Christmas and I've kept it ever since. Here is a nutmeg and you just grate it with this tiny little grater right into your um, pasta sauce. And then when you drain your noodles, you know, get this cooking. You don't want to boil the crap out of it once it's um, together. Then you want to drain your egg noodles and put a little bit of the pasta water. The starch from the pasta water will dilute this a little bit so it's not so thick. Then toss it with your noodles, serve it with green peas or a green salad. It'll be delightful. You will love it. And you will get to see what your egg noodles taste like in some other dish besides fried, like I mentioned earlier. So that's it. We'll show you.